they could exist, uh, these oceans. What has been seen? Well, what the astronomers have seen is they've actually been studying the atmosphere of this white dwarf star. And what they've seen is kind of like the debris that's been left over, they think, from these asteroids going into the star. So this is one of these interesting things that we can do with telescopes, modern telescopes now, is rather than actually directly observe the asteroid themselves, um, we can actually see the signs of them by looking at the light from this star. So it's a very interesting study. OK, and you better take us through our dwarves. What's the difference between a white one, a red one and, and a black one, if there is such a thing? Yeah, so uh, what a white dwarf is, it's, it's kind of almost like a vision of what our sun will become in a few billion years' time. So when a sun-like star begins to, near the end of its life, it begins to sort of shed its atmosphere and slowly but surely its very hot core is exposed and that core has contracted and it's tremendously hot, emitting a lot of UV radiation. It's about 100,000 degrees Celsius and that is what we call a white dwarf star. And so what the astronomers have done is they've actually used a telescope on La Palma in the Canary Islands to look at the light from that star. And in it, they've seen the sort of chemical fingerprints of, in this case, it was oxygen and hydrogen and a few other what we call metals, heavier elements, uh, that have sort of given us a hint that perhaps maybe uh, there's a debris from an asteroid in the atmosphere of that white dwarf star. OK, and it might have water on it. Why do we think that it was uh, comets or asteroids that brought water to Earth? Well, this is the interesting thing. We're slowly piecing together how we think our own solar system formed and how we think planets like the Earth formed. And in fact, we've learned a lot from studying our own solar system. You know, we've visited the comets and asteroids in our own solar system. But one of the interesting things I think about this study is actually it's very indicative of something we've also been doing. And that's learning about our own solar system's history through studying other solar systems. So for a long time, we've thought that asteroids and comets were the water bearers. Um, because they're very cold, they're very icy, and we think that perhaps actually now the evidence suggests that it was the asteroids rather than the comets uh, which historically we thought brought the water. But here in this, in this particular study, we actually see these signs that yes, there must have been a water-rich asteroid uh, in this particular solar system to deposit this material in the star. And so maybe this process of you know, water being delivered to planets by asteroids, maybe it's common throughout our galaxy. OK, and we, we regard water as a prerequisite for some form of human life. But uh, are, are we being too kind of Earth-centric, so to speak? Isn't there the possibility, if there are life forms out there, that they're beyond our imagination and they don't need water? Oh, absolutely. I mean, this is, the, this is one of the, the great questions in astrobiology, you know, is the life that we're looking for, are we sort of really looking along a, a very narrow field of view? We think, like you say, that water is very important to life, but also we've found in our studies of these alien worlds, these extrasolar planets around other stars, we found other things that we think are needed for life. So in some atmospheres of some exoplanets, we've seen what are called organic compounds, so things that contain carbon, things like carbon dioxide. And methane. So all these, all these studies are slowly showing us that perhaps our galaxy is full of the ingredients uh, of life as we know it. Okay, well, and where do you stand on this uh, thorny issue? I know it's much debated if there is intelligent or super intelligent life out there. Should we uh, try and get in touch or keep a low profile? Well, my personal view is that we should probably keep our heads low. I'm not so keen on communicating out into the galaxy because we don't know who's out there. And, and I think that that could be quite a risky um, sort of proposition, sort of broadcasting your location. That's not always um, been a good thing to do on Earth. And I don't think it's a very good thing uh, to do in the Milky Way either.